Okay, this is part one, high watt. I should explain high watt because that word's coming up a lot and the crew asked me to say a few words. So really what it is is an amplifier brand that's uh, existed in the late 60s until today. It became defunct because the owner had a tragic accident in the past. He was somewhat of an enlightened genius when it came to amp building. It was hand wired, point to point. If you're not sure what that looks like, let me show you a picture of it. It's different than most things you'd see today. There's no PC board with traces. What you see are components that are wired directly together. Some of it post to post. So that's what that is. And that's a different type of sound. Um, ultimately, when you have anything on a PC board, think of it as two dimensional. The traces and the layout remain consistent and there's really, it's all on one plane. When you think of something hand wired, you can imagine it as a potentially more three dimensional because things, um, can exist and the cut of the leads on each can mean that each component can be moved up and down. So therefore it's not sitting on the PC board. Some of the stuff's up in the air, some of it's sticking out the other side. If you take a look at hand wired amps, some are quite messy. The one thing about high watts is they were beautifully done. They were, everything was at a right angle, right? So that was just an anomaly. That's called, you know, basically military spec and you know done the way that old tube equipment back in the day before uh, transistors was done, and this would, you know, predate transistors. So you're dealing with World War II, ele early electronics, well into the 60s, but this became, you know, an art form because where things were placed three-dimensionally were kind of like what someone jokingly said were the black arts of, uh, uh, of amp design. So when you have point-to-point -point wired things, uh, basically if the resistor leads are cut an extra half centimeter longer and it's um, been bent over to the side to accommodate some form of space inside the amplifier's chassis, that may affect the sound. And tubes also, and these components give off magnetic fields, so their relationship to one another often have to do with the sound. It's quite interesting. I'm not an amp builder, but I recognize this fact and I can recognize sounds. That's why I'm unboxing this video set by, about my, um, my amplifier collection. But I wanted to touch on HiWatt, which I was the managing director from 2016 to 2020. And there's been a lot of resurrections going on this year, I've noticed. And one of the best ones that I've seen so far is high watt amps. And uh, you remember high watt amps, you know, in the 60s and 70s, a lot of the rock bands, especially the British ones, were using them and really had them on every stage. You see them in all the old pictures and stuff like that. And Darren over here is resurrecting the brand with a lot of new exciting things. He's going to tell us all about it. So, Darren, welcome to uh, welcome to NAM 2019. Oh, it's been a long one. You can tell from my voice, right? You know, it's a, I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, this is the first time the brand's been united in almost 40 years. Wow. Uh, since the 80s, it's always been split, and two different parties were always doing two different things, and they weren't always what the original company did, because really I should take my hat off to the uh, original uh, designer that came up with the design, which is unique unto itself, Dave Reeves. I'll give him some credit here, and his builder, Harry Joyce, that he worked with, who brought, uh, who built these to military spec standard. So we took a look, and I was always a vintage collector, too, of this gear. And between everybody I brought back into the company, we voiced these things against the old product as best we can, of course, adhering to new modern standards, and try to build as close as we can to the originals. Now, the original collectors are going to say, you know, you can never replicate it. So I agree. But I would argue that we're as close as possible, and we're reunited for the first time in 40 years, and we're worldwide. Um, basically, the owner before that was Rick Harrison, and that brand became, uh, you know, it, it had troubles. Uh, Rick resurrected it, did a great job. Um, there was a rift. There was an ownership for Canada, U.S., and Japan that was quite different. And, uh, you know, they ran into a problem. At some point along the way, I identified that this brand could be bought, and the owner wanted to sell. So I brought one person at first, wasn't interested at some point in buying Hiwat. I bought a second person who did buy the high watt brand uh, and then had bought the world except for Canada, US, and Japan. Eventually the trademark is reunited. I can't get into that right now because that's a story unto itself, which is quite colorful and uh, very unusual. But nevertheless, the owner, Rick Harrison, I knew him, I identified this brand as a probable purchase. And why would you buy a franchise like uh, a, a food franchise in North America when you could buy a brand that was at ground zero when rock and roll poured out of the UK in the 60s? Hi, what was part of that sound? I helped get the brand reunited. As a matter of fact, I identified that it could be reunited, got it sold, which nobody thought could be done, then helped wrestle 
the control of the other territories, Canada, U.S., and Japan, from uh, uh, the owner's son and his, uh, uh, his uh, partner, who, uh, Simon, who is quite an interesting person. Just look up High Watt court case, High Watt Simon, High Watt Justin. You know, those guys, you know, what can I say about them? I know at one point the Croatian mob was looking for me when I was in England doing this. So, it was pretty crazy stuff. Luckily, we had some boys from a friend of mine that moved to England to join the UK military. Thank God I was drinking with some t um, tough uh, fellows there. So I had some backup. What's my experience when I ran for mayor? I could bring a lot of skills to the table. If we had to cancel a contract in Toronto and somebody was going to take a baseball bat to me, it's not like something I haven't seen before. I don't know whether I should tell you that, but anyway, there's High Watt. This isn't a commercial for High Watt. This is a story about how crazy this High Watt story is. So go do some research online and enjoy yourself. Uh, I wasn't laughing at the time. If you like what you see, like, hit subscribe, hit the bell. There'll be more if you want it. Maybe make some comments. Ask me what you want there in the comments and maybe I'll elaborate in the next video part two. Okay.